possible. So that's my testimony, and I want to share that with you all, that nothing is impossible. The plan's not too grand. Don't give up on God. Just believe him. You don't have to bring it to pass. Just believe him. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I, um, I want to know if there's, there's people in here that, that wouldn't be able to afford anything back there. I want to give away a couple things here. I hope everybody that, that, that was possible, I, I, uh, I brought enough for each family to get a free book tonight. I hope everybody got one. If not, let me know. I'll bring some more tomorrow. But I just wanted to sow into your life. It's the beginning of the year. I didn't want to do this to begin with. This is our third year now. We just finished it. And um, I just want to sow into your life. And so this is at no cost to you. I wanted to sow. I didn't bring my book table. I'm, I'm, I'm sowing that this, this first meeting to the Lord as a first fruits of the year. So I didn't bring my book table, but I did bring uh, my newest devotional. Um, it, it's called Provision for Your Vision. And it's 60 days of that. And I, I want to give that to you as just once per family. And uh, so I, that I hope that everybody got I know I noticed they're gone back there, so obviously... But anyway, um, besides that, is uh, who would like um, my my new album, F Alter Fire, that just came out? Wow! <laughs> it's um, okay. Wow! All right, we should have brought a thousand. So, all right. Well, Curtis, do the best you can. Okay. Um, I checked this morning. I checked this morning. Now you know this story. You know this story. I'm a vocal. Now listen. Okay. Oh yeah. There. Jeez, it's like the petting zoo. We're feeding. We're feeding. <laughs> no, me, me. <laughs> no, no, listen to my story. I'm a vocalist. I, I, I got a degree in voice. The Lord, when I came back from heaven, I could play, I play, I'm working on my 15th instrument right now. Um, and I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just, I, Kathy can vouch for me. I go into a dark room and I grab a cello or whatever and I come out playing. And I, and I play in church the next week. And that, I did, I've done this for the last few years. And this is what's about it is that I don't even want to do this. <laughs> I'm retired. We're, he's retired. I'm doing this because Jesus said that I can make a difference in this generation. And so I'll tell you this about the music. You gotta you gotta understand something. I have no idea how this works. But I go into a dark room and I make these these albums. This one was done with the whole band. Um, I told them, I said, this is the key, follow me, and we played for an hour, and there you have it. Because I trust these people, they can flow with the Holy Ghost. And we we, we grabbed a, 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 a song from heaven and put it on an album. And, and there's no way that any of us can take glory for it. Okay, now listen to this. My last album, I did it all myself. I played all six instruments. It was charted on Billboard charts number seven. Wow. Isn't that hilarious? Because I don't know what I'm doing. I, I'm not allowed to sing. The Lord would not let me sing on the album because that's something that I can do. Now listen to me. I'm telling you this story for, for you. Because I really don't care about myself. I don't, I'm telling you, this is for you. You can do anything that God gives you strength. I'm telling you, I met the head of the universe, and he told me, he said, if you'll believe, Kevin, nothing shall be impossible to you. I met him, and he is the last say-so. And he's already said say-so over you. Okay, so this morning I checked on this album. It's been out for three days. I, I, every year I save it for Sid Roth, and I say, you can have this to, to launch for your network. Okay, this morning it was rated number three on Amazon under that Lauren D Dangle. Yeah, D Dangle, or whatever her name is. Dangle. Yeah, yeah, Lauren, Lauren, yeah, Lauren L. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding. So I'm looking at it, I'm like, no, no. Okay, so do you, I'm telling you this because you can do this. You, you get a God idea and you run with it. And you never stop until it's finished. Because he is able to do this. So I wanted to tell you this because everything you're seeing for the last three years is God. And it's extra credit. It's totally God. Oh, here comes the angels into the room. Here they come. Already? The announcements? 
You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Are you ready? Oh, dear Lord. They're here. Okay. All right, my new book, Favor. All right. Who didn't get the devotional? Hey, I want one. No. Who didn't get one? Oh, my gosh. All you guys can get one? Okay. All right. Here's the new study guide that just came out. This is one of 15 coming out. This is it. This is when I came back from heaven, I was told to name my ministry Warrior Notes and that I would write this, this series of books. There's going to be 12 of them. This is the first study guide. This is it. It's called Notes of a Warrior. It's about spiritual warfare. There's going to be 12 of these coming out. Does anybody want the, the first one? Okay. All right. Is that it? All right. Hey, hey do I have any kids in here? I'm... Come up here. All the kids just come if you can. If you can, just know. Now, now how many know what Matthew 18 says? What verse is that, honey? 18.10. 18.10. Does anybody know what 18.10 says? Don't look at your phone. Okay, no, you don't have to come down. No, no, just, just stay. Yeah, yeah, just stay right there. There's, okay. Now, listen, listen, listen. Listen to me. I saw that in heaven that if you take care of orphans and widows and children, people that can't pay you back, oh, you better get ready. Okay, so Jesus said, don't do anything wrong to these little ones. Because the, they always, the angels that they have with them, their face of their father, they always see. Okay, so the angels see the face of their heavenly father. So those children right now, there's angels beside them, right? So if you do anything to a child, well, how many know this world is really bizarre and they're touching children these days? So what I like to do is show you something. Now, don't get mad when next week, when I, me and my wife get blasted out of our mind financially. Okay, don't be mad because these, these kids can't pay me back. Oh, come on. So these, their angels are going to go report me. Does anybody hear? Okay, go ahead, honey. All right. We're going to sow into their ministries because Jesus informed me that the children are all called out of the womb in this generation. Every last one of them. Come on. Yeah, hand them out. I'm sowing into their ministries. Is there anybody here? Come on. The Lord told me every child is anointed in the womb as payback. Now listen to me. Satan caught wind that there was a deliverer in the womb. So he, told, he got into Pharaoh and said, take them all out. He missed Moses, and Moses ended up eating off his table. Come on. The wise men. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's more children. Okay. You got more money? We got lots of money. Come on. Sorry about that. Okay. Now listen to me. Jesus Christ, he comes in the womb. The wise men tell Herod, he gets wind, there's a deliverer in the womb. All right, is everybody following me? And he says, take them all out. So Jesus says, mom and dad, let's go to Egypt. We got, I, got, I got frankincense, myrrh, and gold. Let's go for a couple years to Egypt and hide. So that's what they did. Is there anybody here? Don't get it. Okay. So Israel becomes a nation in 1948. And Jesus said some things about when that happens. That this generation, so I say this generation, this generation, shall not pass away. So what, what they do, they legalize killing babies in the womb. Because there's a deliverer in the womb again. The prophetic generation is in the womb. Oh, come on. So the best thing you can do is sow into these children. Because this is the generation right here that has the voice that's going to usher in the coming of the Lord. Come on. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Suffer not the children. All right. Did you? Oh, you got, you got some cash? This is Pastor Curtis from Zurich, Switzerland. He's, he's, he's kind of like my bodyguard. He flew in. Thank, give him a hand. Come on. Come on now. Okay, the Lord, I had all this stuff planned, and the Lord said it's story time tonight. I go, and I know what that means. That means the glory cloud's coming in. So I've already mentioned a couple of scriptures, so don't get nervous if I tell stories now. No, no, don't just opt out because I'm not reading out of the Bible for the next 45 minutes, okay? It's okay to have story time. Mr. Rogers had story time. You want me to get my, I got my slippers on right now. Now, come on. Now, listen to me. You can do this. That's what the Spirit of the Lord said. I mean, he visited me early this morning, and he said to me, you can do this. My angel's standing right beside me, and he's saying, you know, we can load, we can do this. Okay, if you can do this, then what is that? you gotta, you got to see that something has been planted inside of you. And the devil wants to take it out of you. And most of you have had these weird friends that are trying to abort your dream. You've even been in churches that try to abort your dream. But isn't it about time to just obey God in the passion of your heart? What is it that's inside of you? Because it's the hope of glory. Well, hope doesn't disappoint, does it? So I'm going to tell you a couple of stories that you've never heard before. Now, listen to me. I want to show you how rigged this is in your favor. I want to show you it's rigged. Now, I, now you have to understand something. You've got to help me out here. You've got to e at least act like you get it. <laughs> because I want to tell you something. Any one of you, if you had happened what I've had happen to me, you'd be up here saying the same thing and wondering if people are getting it. Because it's beyond. He, Jesus, is beyond anything that you've ever thought or imagined. You cannot grasp what God has for those who love him. But it has been revealed to us by the Spirit. That means that the Spirit is our friend, and he's the revealer of Jesus. Okay, so we need to depend upon him. We better depend upon him, because that's all we've got. So if you grieve the Holy Spirit, if you grieve the Holy Spirit, you grieve me. Because me and him are one. I mean, according to Scripture, anyway, if you want to bring the Bible into it. <laughs> but I don't want a sip. I want to be totally sloshed. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I want to finish this up down here. The glory is coming in. Receive your healing right now. Especially the blood diseases, the hearing loss. And the heart problems, the palpitations, whatever that is. Palpitations. Receive. Oh, there, you're all going to get it tonight, I can tell you. Oh, I'm getting drunk. I, I, you know, your, your lips start getting tingly. And you, you're like from the other world. And you can walk through a wall. Yeah, that's the... That's, that's the image of God that you were made in. Come on now. Don't put the brakes on me. You were made in his image. Start imaging. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's already starting. It's Thursday night. You guys are crazy. Oh, dear Lord. Get, get up. You better get, get up here and grab me. Dear Lord. Okay. All right. Before I leave the platform, <laughs> if you could feel what is up here, you'd get up here yourself, but don't. <laughs> Mr. Policeman needs to get up here. <laughs> now listen, listen to me. I have a couple of stories I have to tell you. It's going to shift your perception. I'll start with a couple of stories. I want to show you that everything you experience every day 
is rigged in your favor, whether it is terrible or not, don't, don't worry about it because it ain't over yet. If you check, there's a blank page, the next page, and God's writing it. He's already written it, actually. It ain't over yet. This is thus saith the Lord, by the way. Thus saith the Lord. If I have to say that, I'm telling you, it's not over yet for you. Man, I see so many faces of people I have, I pray for, there's so many people in here I pray for every day. I've never met you, but I see you on Facebook and on YouTube. And I pray for you. I see a lot of people here. And I was, I was hoping that this girl named Charlene would show up and she's here. Because I've been praying for her and her business for, for over a year, probably three years. Charlene, wave at me. There she is. I pray for you every day. She's here. I told the Lord, bring her. Bring her here. See, so you don't know who's praying for you. Julie Myers. Where's Julie Myers at? Where is she? Julie. Can you wave? There you go. Okay, now, Julie, I've never met her. I still haven't met her. But I, I had gone to heaven, come back, and I was not allowed to talk about it for 23 years. And I worked for a pastor, and I never told him. He found out about my heaven experience when he watched Sid Roth by, Roth by, Roth by accident. I'm so drunk. But, but I wasn't allowed to talk about it. So I worked at an airline for 30 years, doing five flights a day, praying in tongues, feeding the poor at night. And when I would hear her play, I said, that's from heaven. She's got the touch of heaven on her. And she's helped me, and she doesn't even know it, that she's helped me through times, hard times. Oh, you're not getting this, are you? She do, she does it, she's finding out right now. But she has helped me to get through stuff. How about how much stuff are you going through? So everything you do, do it under the Lord because you never know how you're going to influence somebody. I watched Sid Roth for, Roth for years and years. And I said, someday, Kathy, Kathy, I'm going to be on that show. And I'm going to have a book. And he's going to ask me questions. And I'm going to talk to him about my heavenly experience. Whenever the Lord appears to me and tells me I'm released. It took 23 years. He appeared to me. And he said, it's time. So I wrote that book. And then he said, sell everything and move to New Orleans. I go, excuse me? <laughs> and one day, we were in a hotel because we didn't even have a place to stay. He told us to check into a hotel. So every month, we'd fly for, after I flew for a week, we would fly from Seattle down there at, in New Orleans, go to the Holiday Inn, check in for a week, and pray in tongues and fast every month. We did that for months. And he told us, sell everything. So somebody asked us, do you want to tour uh, that guy, Jesse Duplantis Ministries? I said, well, yeah, I, yeah, I guess. He's, he's crazy. <laughs> so we toured it. He came out of his office. He grabbed my hand, and he couldn't let go of it. Now, listen to me. He, after a while, he, st he st started telling his staff, call the couple. I want them to go to lunch with me. It just kept happening. I'm thinking, man. And, and what, this is what happened. He goes, the Lord told me I'm supposed to ordain you. So he laid hands on me in front of the world, ordained me and Kathy, Kathy and I. And then when he touched my head, he said, you call Jan Crouch tonight. He said, this is your son. So he never told me. Next thing you know, I'm on TBN with him. And Sid Roth saw that. And the rest is history. That's how rigged it is. Now listen to me. Now listen to me. We didn't do a thing except pray in tongues and do our thing alone in secret. And now it's just too big. 7,600 students in 12 months? I don't even want to do it. 110 items on my book table? you got to be kidding me. In three years? You want to know why? Because if I can do this as a flight attendant, you can do this. 
You can be a minister of the gospel. You just have to hear what the Lord is saying to you. What is your passion inside? Because it's your ministry. My job, the Lord instructed me. I stayed at a company for 30 years. My first day, I said, I'm quitting. Because I'm trained to fly the airplane, and the Lord told me to be a flight attendant. And I'm like, excuse me? You've got to be kidding me. So I had to be a flight attendant for 29 years on the airplane that I could fly. Is there anybody here, or is it just me? Okay, you, you know what happened? I died. I died every day, every flight. I did. But you know what? I couldn't wait to get to the hotel because I can pray in tongues and I could feed the poor. So don't get mad because favor isn't fair. No, listen to me. I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow you away. You look it up. It's on the internet. It must be true. You plant one seed of wheat, and it says that the average yield for one seed in the ground is a stalk that has eight heads, and it has 40 seeds on each head. That's 320 seeds. You don't eat that. You plant it again. You plant that. And in the third year, you have a harvest. You have a field. And from then on, you plant fields instead of seeds. Now, listen to me. Because you didn't get it. I'm, I'm planting fields. I'm in my third year. I'm planting fields. That means that the whole earth is going to hear the good news of the gospel. How about, how, about, how about if you would join in that by listening to what's inside of you? Because God planted something inside of you. And all of hell wants it. But you're not going to give it up, are you? No. No. Okay, here's the first story to show you how rigged it is. Back in 78, I'm, 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 the year is, is kind of sketchy because I didn't write it down, but you'll get the point. I was in Pennsylvania. The Blue Angels, you know, the demonstration team, they were in town at this airport that was about an hour away. So none of my family, you know, I was a kid, but nobody wanted to go. But I, I said, I just, I, I went. And I sat there and watched the, it was the, uh, it was a smaller jet that they used at the time. It was an A-4. It's a real small jet. And um, this guy came upside down and flew down the runway. And I go, I was, I, I, I wanted to put myself in the cockpit to feel what that would be like. This guy was like really good. So he's, he's going, he's flipping it over like this, going like this, and he's going straight down the runway, and all the other guys are flying around, and he starts spinning like this, and then yanks it up. I go, I want to be that guy. I go, I would like to be, I would like to meet that guy. Now listen to me. That was in 78. Fast forward to 1992. I go to the cockpit on a flight at my job, sitting there talking with the pilots during the flight. And uh, the, the captain goes, hey, this guy was a blue angel, so you know, he's, he's, he, you know, he thinks he knows everything. Blue angel? He goes, yeah. He goes, but it was a long time ago. You know, I said, well, what'd you fly? And he goes, A4. I go, what position? He goes, the, he goes the, the, one, the one of the soloists. I go, did you go upside down, straight down the runway in such and such a town in, in Pennsylvania in 1978? He goes, yep, that was me. <laughs> did you hear what I just said? And we became friends. How do you, how do you make this stuff up? Okay, you want to hear another story? I watched Top Gun. <laughs> and I was reminded that I gave all that up to go to Bible school. And I was feeling a little bit disappointed. Because you know what I know why? Because religion is powerless. You know what I mean? You have a form of godliness denying the power. Who wants that? I gave up F-16s for the power of God, not for the power of religion. Come on. Come on. 
All right. So, I'm at work serving the cockpit. And I, I said, I said, hey, you guys seen Top Gun, whatever, you know. He goes, well, you know, that, I'm based out there still now. I go, what? He goes, I'm an instructor for the 301 out there for the F-14s. I go, no. I said, negative Ghost Rider, the pattern's full. <laughs> now listen to me. He's an instructor out there, and he is the commander of that squadron on his days off still. And he flies for Southwest Airlines. He said, uh, you really like that Top Gun? I said, oh, man. He goes, how'd you like to go and sit in the classroom that was in that movie and have a briefing with me? I go, stop. Don't <laughs> no, listen to me. Fast forward, I'm, I, I, I fly in there, get a hotel, and I meet him there at the gate. And I spent the whole day with him in a briefing. They went and flew a mission without me, of course, and then came back and did the debriefing with me, and then I got to watch the film because they might have taken my video camera with them, but I don't know. I don't remember. I thought, how does God do this? That's what I started the thinking. Okay, you want to hear another one? Just to show you that if you give up what you think you want to do, God doesn't forget. I had a captain come up to me, and he said, I hear that you gave up flying, uh, and you're going to minister, but did you still want to get all your ratings and stuff? And I said, yeah. He said, well, uh, I feel in my heart that the Lord's telling me that I'm supposed to do it for free for you. He said, I'll take you the whole way to your, to your commercial pilot, and then I'll get you your instructor rating. And he said, here's the keys to my, my house. Here's the keys to my car. And I'm kidding you not. And he's Mormon. <laughs> I kid you not. But he said God told him to do this. So he gave me all my ratings. You want to hear another one? Yeah. I'm in the cockpit again. Boy, I spent a lot of time in the cockpit for being a flight attendant. <laughs> At Miramar, I got to go and see the Blue Angels perform in the F-18, which is what they have right now. Now, the F-18 is amazing. But it's Navy, so, you know, it's not. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if it... I'm saying that because Pastor Curtis worked on, where is he? There, He worked on an aircraft carrier. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> uh, so this guy comes by, and he accidentally, uh, had the throttle setting was too much for, for the humidity and the air temperature, and he broke the sound barrier just for a second. But that's all you need. Because he crinkled a white van that was sitting there at the end of the runway waiting if anything bad happened. He turned it into a raisin <laughs> from the shockwave. And he has all these clouds coming by, like the cloud is forming around his airplane as he flew by, like whoosh. I go, I would like to know what it was like to have that happen. And so I'm sitting in a cockpit and saying, yeah, I got to go to Top Gun and Miramar. And, and um, then, um, man, but the best was when I got to see the Blue Angel. I have to change the batteries every time. It just, it just happens everywhere I go. So I don't know what you want to do. And it happens everywhere we go. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's his fault, that angel. He's, it's just too strong. But I got to have him. He, is there anybody who can give me another one, or is this okay? I'll, I'll just step over here. Maybe it's just a UFO overhead or something. Back to the podium. But I like it being around the people. Okay, listen to me. So I'm telling him, and, the, and, the, and the, the captain goes, what year was that? And I told him, he goes, that was me. I go, that was you? You were the solo that broke the barrier? He goes, yeah. He goes, they painted a little white van on the nose of my airplane <laughs> as, a, as a confirmed target. <laughs> I go, you can't make this up. You want to hear another story? 
I'm trying to show you something here. Everything is attached to your future. It's just how you deal with it. Are you there yet? When I walked away from my nomination to the Air Force Academy, I went to a, a college to be trained to become a preacher. But when I got there, it was powerless. And so people, people that were there that knew there was a call in my life, they would sneak me tapes from people that were banned. <laughs> and I would hide them under my, my rug in my room so that when the hall monitor came, they inspected our rooms, they wouldn't find it. So I had my Kenneth Hagin tapes under there. And I had one Kenneth Copeland tape, and when I put it in, this is what I heard. Now, I've never met this guy. I'm going to meet him this Sunday at our church because Jesse's, Jesse's having him in, and I'm going to get to meet him for the first time. But this is what I heard on the tape. And just, if you don't like him, that's fine. You don't even have to like me. But I'm still going to tell you the truth. But don't be like what Paul said. Do you, am I now your enemy because I've told you the truth? You know, you don't find yourself on the wrong side of that sword. Now, listen, I heard on that tape... Kenneth Copeland say, I believe in this word so much, the Bible. He said that you can drop me out of an airplane in the Arizona desert and come back, and in three years, I'll have a city there. And something went into my spirit. Someone into my spirit. I go, nobody talks like that. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, someone else gave me another, another tape, a black one. And this guy kind of talked with an accent. And when I put it on, I could only pray in tongues for 10 minutes. But when I put that tape on, I could pray for three hours and miss a meal. <laughs> and it got to where it was more and more and, and only, only one meal a day. And before you know it, I'm being translated. Is, it, is this on? Translated. I can't pray in English anymore. I can't talk in English anymore. I have to eat so I can come back. I have to start to do other things of this world to get me back in touch with this realm because I went over where there's no limits. And I saw the future. And I came back and watched it happen over and over again. And I'm thinking, this is, this is really fun and it's free. No drugs involved. <laughs> and I said, I would love to meet this man. And this is what they said. They said, well, he, they, they'll never have him back because he would, he would call people out if they were in sin. And it was the head honchos of this denomination. <laughs> so there, he's never coming back. Uh-oh. So I went on, I graduated from that college, and I went on to my two-year program. At the two-year program, I worked at a hotel. And I wore, I wore a tux, and I'm just greeting people, and I'm, I'm the concierge at this hotel, and I'm going to Rama. Don't get mad at me. I learned a lot there. Now listen, this man comes in, and I hear his voice, and it's the same voice as on the tape. But he's like five foot four. And his hair's kind of freaky. <laughs> and he has an accent, you know. And so the, con the, the other guys, they were kind of afraid of him. They said, oh, this is one of your guys. You know, you're one of them Christian guys. You know, just take him. You're going to take him up to the room, him and his wife and his little baby. Oh, my gosh. I, 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 said, uh, I said, hello. He goes, hi, I'm Benny Hinn. And the power of God that was on that tape came on me. Listen to me. The next day, he comes down. He goes, can you get me an iron? I said, sure. Can I talk to you sometime? He goes, oh, you, you can imagine how many people want to talk to me. He said, I, I can't do that. I said, well, and then I just didn't say anything. 
He walked away, and I said, Lord, you told me to say something to him. You've embarrassed me. So he goes up the elevator, and I watch it start coming back down. And he comes out, and he's mad. He goes, the Lord told me I have to talk to you. <laughs> he says, he says, be here at 7 o'clock tomorrow night or forget it. And he walks away. So the next day, it's my day off, my only day off. And he shows up really late because he was taking the offering and for Yonggi Cho, or, you know, now is David Cho, I guess. But, you know, whoever, it was a, a pastor for, in Korea. And Benny Hinn came over and he apologized. And he sat there and he goes, the Lord's been talking to me about you. And he said, thus say the Lord. And he went on for 40 minutes. Did you, 40 minutes. The same power that was on that tape that I listened to for three years, for three hours a day, was now sitting before me, the same power. And he said, you're going to have it all, Kevin. That was in 86. You want to hear some more stories? Do you see how rigged it is? Every day, you are encountering someone who is part of your destiny. Every day. You just don't know. So please sow into everyone. Give people your time, even children. They might be your boss someday. <laughs> Another story. Right before I went to Sid Roth, I was still flying. But the power of God was so strong that when I would go to work, I could hardly walk. I was all the time. And I learn to just be full of the spirit because I can handle things better. Sober, I'm scary. <laughs> and so are you. <laughs> now listen, you gotta you got to let it go. You gotta let the Holy Spirit bring some joy into your life. So I, I realized that I'm gonna be at this company for a while. Because I had only planned on doing that for a couple years, and it turned into 29. I asked the Lord to let me retire every day <laughs> for 29 years. How many of you are in a situation now where you just want delivered from what you're going through? Yeah, I, I know. That's why you're here tonight, because this is story time. So I would go to work every day to a job I never wanted, I wanted to fly the plane, and I was excited when the Lord said, you're going to Southwest Airlines, but he didn't tell me because he knew I'd throw a fit, so he didn't tell me I was going to be a flight attendant. <laughs> Dear Lord, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> you don't get it, do you? Now listen to me. One day, I came to work, we boarded the flight. There, were, there was a group of 15 people that had boarded. And when I walked by them, they all, at the same time, manifested devils. They manifested devils. Their invisible friends couldn't keep quiet. <laughs> During the flight, they threatened to rape all the women. Oh, you won't hear this on the news. So I called the cab and I said, listen, we, we got, we got, I just gave them all the signals and, you know, what's next is F-16s uh, coming and taking us into Vegas really fast. Those people were carried off by eight police officers because they had invisible friends. Is there anybody following me? Do you see that the other realm came in contact with a believer? That's all it was. Confrontation is inevitable. Your relationship with God is going to cause confrontation with devils. So why are you blaming yourself? You're in a war. So I called my wife and I said, honey, it just took eight cops to get these demon-possessed people off the plane. I said, I need to quit. I said, I think it's time. Because these police reports, they take a long time, you know. And, okay, so then, a 
couple weeks later, I'd walk by and I was serving people, and people started laughing when I'd walk by. I go, what's so funny? We go, we don't know. There's something on you, and every time you walk by, it gets on us. I said, the one lady was crying. I said, what's wrong with you? I don't know. I just feel God. I go, are you a Christian? No. They go, what is that? I go, well, you know, I died and came back. They go, no way. What did you see? Did you see a light at the end of the tunnel? I said, no, I saw Jesus, the light. At this point, row th the, th the th second, third, and fourth row, because I'm up front working the front section, they, they said, can you speak up? I want to hear this. Before you know it, I had 24 people crying. And I still haven't given out all the orange juice yet. <laughs> now listen to me. This is what Christianity is about. You know what? I, would, I, I did that faithfully for 30 years, and I, I, now I'm up here at Joan Hunter's. I never thought I'd meet Joan Hunter. But I, I was told by Jesus that you need to talk to Joan Hunter because her, her parents are bothering me up here. That's true. And I told my wife, I will, I will be invited and I will get to minister to her. I will tell her that her parents are cheering her on and that there is a legacy in this place. Come on. So they wanted her to know, and I'm ministering to her by the Lord. I'm telling her, thus saith the Lord, that the Lord has so much more in store that's in queue. It's a succession of, of events that will happen, thus saith the Lord. And it's a tipping point that is coming this year. It's about to flip. And they wanted her to be encouraged and hang on because it's going to get glorious. And it's going to get easier, Joan. It's going to get easier. You're not going to always have to defend. Like that guy that defended the bean field, and they had to peel. They had to peel his hand off the sword. Who was that? Shama! Thank you. That's my concordance, my wife. She's amazing. Okay, getting back to the story. Getting back to the story. I'm, I'm like blown away because all these people are, like some of them are falling out. And I'm telling them the gospel. They're, they go, um, do you have a book out? I go, well, yeah, it just came out. I'm going to be on Sid Roth. They said, what's the name of it? And they're on Amazon in their seats while we're taxing back ordering my book. <laughs> and they're crying. Now, everyone in my section came off, and the pilots and me have to stand there and greet everybody. I have to say hi and goodbye to 800 people a day, or I can get fired. I got I to be nice to everybody, even if they're crazy. <laughs> so I had to do that for 30 years. So the captain's standing there, and everyone in my section is hugging me and kissing me and saying, I just ordered your book. And the captain's like, what have you done to these people? That's what he said. Is this good story time? Okay, well, I'll finish up here in a little bit here. There's a point to all this. I felt like the Lord told me to tell these, these five or six stories, and that's it. Because the impartation is coming to you. You have to see something. I was sent back from the dead, and I can't lose. And I would like some company in that line. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Let the redeemed of the Lord say so! The captain turns to me. He's got a tear in his eye. He goes, get up to the cockpit during the next flight. I want to hear what happened to you. He goes, you didn't tell me you died. I go, well, it's not something, you know, you mentioned, you know, like, you know, like when we go to work, we just, we want to get off the ground to get paid. We want to get back on the ground and walk away from the airplane and get paid. You know, that's our goal. Zero miles an hour at the gate with no reports to file. No missing persons, nothing. Oh, boy, it's getting good in here. Oh. 
see the impartations here, and, and no fire tunnel. I didn't wave my jacket at you. I didn't breathe into the mic. Come on, people. The Lord's here. Come on. Oh, he's... Receive your healing now. Receive your healing. He'll get credit for it. That's it. He's constantly speaking songs of deliverance over you. He's constantly singing to you. He's the Lord and he's a warrior. Check it out. Zephaniah 317. There you go. You got a scripture verse. Dear Lord. So I go up there during the flight. And he turns to the first officer and says, you got, you got the airplane? Which means, you know, he's flying it now. So the captain turns around. He said, tell me what's going on. What happened? So I told him the whole story, and you know the story of what happened to me. So I just told it like Perry Stone style, really fast. <laughs> so in two hour, a, a two-hour story I did in 28 minutes and 31 seconds, just like Perry does. And he goes, you know what? He stopped me. He goes, you know what? This guy needs to hear this. He said, I got the airplane. And he turns, and he's flying now. And the first officer turns around, and he's bawling. He goes, Kevin, while you were talking, he said, I, got, I just got saved. <laughs> he said, he said, uh, you know, no, he's a brand new believer. He said, as you were talking, I went into a vision. Don't tell the FAA. But he went into a vision. <laughs> and he said, I was taken back to 16 years old. We were in the woods. We were deer hunting with bow hunting. And he said, my friend accidentally let an arrow go, and it went my way. And it was, those things were coming so fast. He said, it was, it was at the end of the day. And he said, no one told me anything. He said, but I heard my name being called. And I'm in this vision back in that forest. He said, no one, everyone saw it. All my front buddies saw it because we were all gathering. We hadn't gotten anything. He said, I don't, no one knows, but they saw it happen. He said, I turned around and caught the arrow. And it nicked me, and he had a, this scar right here where it, it hit, because it's like razor blades. And it went in right here, and he caught it. Now, you can't catch an arrow even if you know it's coming at you. Except, you know, Claude Van Damme and all those guys. But, you know, <laughs> but, you know in real life, he's cr this guy's crying. He goes, in that vision, it was a flash. He said, you listen to this man, Kevin, because I've sent him to you. They will tell you the way of salvation. He said, I preserved your life that day for this day here. <laughs> so this week, this week, I bought a model. The Lord's, I forgot all about every story. The reason I know these stories is because the Lord reminded me this week. And he said, Kevin, it's so rigged that you couldn't handle it if you knew how rigged your life is. He said, go tell everyone. Make the devil sweat. So he told me, I went online, I didn't know what he was doing, but I hear the voice of God. I went online, bought the nicest model with my own money, not with ministry money, so don't get mad at me. I bought an A4 with the Blue Angel paint job on it, and I bought an F18 with the Blue Angel. And then the Lord said to me, I want you to see how important you are to me. You're going to look at those models on your desk when you come in off the road from ministering to people, and you're going to look at those jets and know that it's been rigged even before you knew me. See, every one of you is tied to your destiny, but it involves another person. We had to sell everything, give it to the poor, and come to New Orleans and fight alligators. <laughs> Just to get into my next step which just to shake Jesse Duplantis' hand. And because of that, then Sid Roth called me. I didn't call him. He called me. 
And he said, where have you been? We've been waiting for something like this. Where have you been? I said, I've been on an airplane. I called it Joseph's Pit. He said, he said, he said, when you can you get down here? Now I'm telling you this for a reason. There are people that I have met that I have prayed for only by a picture. I have prayed for them hours a day. And I said, Lord, bring them to my meeting. I'm going to lay hands on them. And they've already told me they're going to write a book. They're, this person's going to work for you. This person's going to be on Sid Roth. They, he's already told me, and they don't know. So if you're watching, just, re, just don't. I meet people all the time, and I see flashes of their future. And I'm an integral part of their future because I obeyed God and came when I didn't feel like it and spoke. <laughs> I spoke from the other realm, and there was an impartation. And now you can believe. I planted one little seed in you, but it's going to have a harvest of 320 seeds. You know, I accidentally, one night, you know, I, I accidentally fed an angel. You know, on those street mission things I was doing. See, I thought I'd done something wrong because uh, when I was at Kenneth Hagin's, they asked me to be one of their singers. And the Lord said, oh, no, you're going to Southwest Airlines. I go, good, I get to be a pilot. He goes, no, a flight attendant. I go, excuse me. <laughs> but look where I ended up. But I owe everything to my fathers in the faith. Sid Roth and Jesse DePlanis, even if you don't like them, it doesn't matter. They were an integral part. Of my destiny, which is hinged to yours. The reason you're here is you want to hear from God, not from me. And you're going to get it because I'm going to start prophesying and we're going to end this thing. Listen to me. The devil's already tried to kill me. He's failed. Every day, every day he fails. But we focus on the things he's done to us. But how about the things he didn't succeed at? Oh, oh Jesus. Come on now. There is such a power in this room. I'm telling you, you need yourself. Get over yourself. The Lord says you're doing better than you think you're doing. There is chatter in heaven. There are people talking about how good you're doing. Come on now, receive this. Joan has no idea what's going to happen to her. Because it's a secret. But I guarantee you, Jesus saved the best for last. Joan, it's going to be all worth it. It's going to be all worth it. And I know it's hard at times. But I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, you, one day you're going to say, he was right. God is good. Because she knows that. But how many of you have come to this place tonight and you know you're just about there? Yeah. Can you feel it? There's something going on in the spirit. It's flipped. And the enemy now is trying his best to do damage control. He's running and tucking. It's a tuck and roll maneuver. And he looks like an armadillo. And you don't know, at times it looks like a basketball, and at times it looks like a marsupial, and at times, it, you know, you don't know what it looks like. It might be roadkill. But the thing of it is, is he is looking up at you because he's under your feet. Listen, money should never, never, ever limit you. 
Your dream can bust through poverty. Your dream can take you to the place of provision. Jesus told me, and I'm telling you, he said, Kevin, when we plan out people's lives, we plan out their provision first, and then we give them their vision. I can't hear you. <laughs> the Lord has already designed your provision for your vision. You see, in the realm he's in, it seems backwards to us, but he proclaims the end from the beginning. He writes a book about you, then he breathes you into your mother's womb. He does everything opposite of what we're taught so that you never come to the truth. But I think tonight there's some people free in here. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's a strength in here. Nothing is impossible. Now, did Jesus say that? Is it not in red in Mark 9, 23? Okay, how would you like it if that person, the head of the universe, the head of the church, stands before you, and you can see his lips moving so you can tell what he's saying, not just hear it. And he says, Kevin, if you'll believe, nothing is impossible to you. What do you do with that? Then all of a sudden, it doesn't matter how much you study the, the Greek and the Hebrew and the homebrew. Right. <laughs> because the head of the church said it to you, and there's no one behind him that's higher. Because he has been given the name that's above all names. So he has the last word. Now, I close with this respectfully because it's, 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 it's 930. And it's, I can hear the song behind me where it's time for Mr. Rogers to get his slippers off and put his shoes back on and get his jacket on and go because i got to come back in the morning. Jesus showed me a stack of papers, and, I, and he said, you know what this is? He said, this is all the prayers you're ever going to pray, and if you look, I've already signed off on them. I go, whoa, 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 whoa. So you understand that when I fed that angel accidentally a whopper, it re he revealed himself to me, and he said, he said, you've done good, Kevin, and the, and the Lord God has sent me to tell you that the United States, within the next couple years, will go through terrible economic times. So take everything out of the markets and protect your money. And so I did. So they, they, the, the markets crashed the next year in 2001, and I didn't participate in it as a flight attendant. So a year later, the Lord tells me to put it back in, so I do, and I double it. So now I've got double what everyone else has in at my company. Okay, an angel comes in 2008, same angel, in the Seattle airport, stands beside me as we're ready to board Southwest Airlines. And he said, Kevin, it's going to happen again. And I looked, and CNBC was on, and the markets were at the top. He goes, that's the top, and it was. He says, get it out. As, as they're boarding my group, I'm typing in and putting everything out. Closed my laptop, got on the plane, and, and a couple months later, it tanked again without me. And in February, the Lord, the word of the Lord comes says, put it all back in. I quadrupled now. Now I'm quadruple as a flight attendant. So now I can retire. But he has me stay for many years after that. Why am I telling you this? Not so that you look at me, because I'm just Kevin. But you are why Jesus sent me back. He said, you go back for the people, and you tell them what you saw. You tell them what you heard. Jesus is beyond your imagination. He is so much better than what you know. And he has written a book about you before you were born. You're not an accident. You are designed by him. Your parents had the privilege of carrying you and taking care of you. They're going to answer to God. 
my parents had the privilege of having me. Because I'm not from this world. I'm visiting. I am not basing my life on what has happened to me. I'm basing it on the very words that come out of my Savior, Jesus Christ. I love you all. Everybody stand. And whoever's taking this service, come on up here because I'm going to fall. May the glory that passed by Moses in the cleft of the rock pass by right now. Reach out and touch the Lord Jesus Christ. He heals right now. I break every power, every demonic spirit over your life right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Lord is passing by right now. The goodness of God. Charlene, you get ready because it is time. I've been waiting years to say this to you, Charlene. I've never even met you yet, but you're out there. I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, you have been prepared for a time such as this. You will minister to so many women by the word of the Lord. The Lord has designed this as a vehicle for you to touch the nations. Yeah, I said nations. The Lord loves you, Charlene. He's... he's, he's He's hijacked my life so I could pray for you. He is passionate for you. And he says, I have called you. It's my fire on you, Charlene. You're a barrier breaker. Father, I thank you for the favor that rests on the people. Thank you that they made the effort to come here. And I believe, Lord, that you were glorified. And that I was invisible. In the name of Jesus, be blessed. Receive the Holy Spirit of fire right now. Receive the fire. Come on, receive the fire. Fire! It's going to get better. It's going to get better. The chaff is being burnt, and you're going to see clearly. The Lord says, I'm anointing you, your eyesight, to see into the depths of the Spirit. Eyes that see, ears that hear. You're going to know me, says the Lord, because I'm going to visit you. I'm going to visit you at night. I'm sending my angel to stand beside you, to minister to you. It's going to get real bright. It's going to get real bright in your life. The spirit of counsel is upon you. you. The counsel of the Lord. Caught up in the counsel of God. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Thank, I love you all. Drink, drink, drink. ask everybody just to stay right where you are for the next couple of minutes because I want to be sure that he can move as as the Holy Spirit is moving him. Can we just worship the Father right now? Father, we thank you so much. Let me hear you. Thank you, 
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for the word that was released tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Check, check. There we go. We're finding, figure it out. I want to ask you, how many of you tonight, your faith was built because you're stuck right now or you feel like you're stuck and you're ready for that next thing, but you see the faithful reward that he's received because he stayed where God had told him to be until God released him to move on. So I want to encourage you to wait because there's such a reward when we hear the voice of the Father say, now is the time to go, now is the time to move, now is the time to retire or to quit or to move on or to take that next step. Let that be an encouragement to you tonight. You know, I always tell people, if you haven't won, it's not done. So if it's not good, it's not finished. Amen? Amen. Um, don't go anywhere yet. But I do want to take a quick moment and thank all of you that are watching online. You guys are awesome tonight. And I'm so glad you didn't show up here because we would have literally had no room for you. We have more people watching streaming than we do in the room. So this really is the largest service we have ever held at Joan Hunter Ministries. So I want to thank all of you for watching online. Everybody here in the room, stay put. But for those that are watching online, God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Everybody say bye. Bye. Okay, for those of you that are in the room.